in what aspects of your life do you get women involved? So super obvious example, parties, uh, but other examples could be going out to restaurants. Um, Denton, you mentioned Babes in Toyland, for example, charities. Uh, another example, last night I was on the Just Pearly Things YouTube channel and I was there with my wife. So what are some things you get your girl girlfriends or dates involved in in your life areas i think there's a definitely a big difference between a girlfriend and like a random chick that you recently met but for me my, i mean my girlfriend helps me with like everything if i need if i'm traveling somewhere she'll probably come with me um yeah i mean like i don't i don't think there's anything where i keep her out of like even if i'm going out with friends i'll typically invite her we'll all have fun um i can't think of anything where i would like not like keep one area of life that I would keep her out of yeah, what about what about um like your own personal shit like stuff that you're dealing with in your mind demons and like personal like whatever's going on in your own life do you share that with her or do you like yeah yeah if, 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 I, if i feel like she can help yeah for sure I, I keep, what about I keep the my girls out of the business stuff i keep like i keep the business stuff separate right like i'll, I'll get my girls to like help out with shit around the house tidy my house get me coffee help me set up with stuff someone's being the content but for the most part, I keep things separate as much as I can, right? But if I, mean, I think like it's a good idea, like I, I do think it could be problematic to get your girl like make her like a partner on the business where she gets like profit. I think that gets really really dicey. But aside from that, I mean, I guess it depends on who your girlfriend is. Like my girlfriend is like works in marketing, so like her feedback, you know, is going to be beneficial when it comes to marketing, right? So I would probably sense. like if I if I need feedback, like I have asked her for feedback, like hey, which one of these sales pages do you think like flows better? uh or like hey which types of advertising you think i should do but uh yeah but i do agree with you that you shouldn't like like if a girlfriend becomes part of the business that's when things get a little dicey yeah i know this huge uh content creator who just broke his girlfriend after two and a half years this guy's got like fucking 10 million followers and he had to buy his girlfriend out of the business he just gave her three hundred thousand US dollars and i don't think he had anything in writing with her like i think he was just kind of in simp mode but she helped him build a business so he fucking just bought her out and yeah, but that, can, that can happen also with business partners. Like sometimes you just yeah, I was gonna say yeah, exactly. I mean, I've, had, I've had that happen. I'm it was his business problem. though, and it was his brand. I think he just kind of felt the need to do so, you know. But well, uh, if she's got any leverage, like if she has the passcodes or the logins to his YouTube account or Facebook ads account or whatever he uses, then he's still got to kind of buy that leverage back, right? Yeah. Well, I think it's just a good decision. Oh, sorry, like if she's helped to build the business, like if, if this was my mate, like if this is my buddy that helped me build the business, even though there was nothing in writing, I'd, I'd still like pay that person out. I think that's fair. I mean, depends what you mean by help. Like if, if she gave some feedback on marketing, as Alex said, then fuck that, right? But if she's actually like helping building the business, then I think that's fair. At the end of the day, I think business partnerships are really, really hard and possibly even harder than like regular relationships in some ways. So I think that uh, if you are combining your real relationship your relationship with a business relationship that's like you're like double dipping into danger territory so i would personally probably keep those separate uh at least in my opinion i know there's some like uh youtubers who get their girlfriends in on the business i think how to be like his girlfriend uh is like directly involved in the business but yeah i feel like that's like double dipping in the danger zone so as to speak yeah yeah, i think with any girl they need to go through some filtering process i, I feel like a lot of guys out there that like finally do get a girlfriend or dating a girl involve them way too much in everything i think they need to earn these privileges as they go through so for me like i'm not really even taking a girl to dinner on the first night right like she's going to earn that uh privilege and she's not going to meet any of my friends early on she's going to like earn that privilege she's not going to go on a holiday with me she's going to earn it so i think like as you go through and like alex you've been with your girlfriend for a while now right so she's going to be involved in most of your life but that's not going to happen just like some fucking tinder girl i just slept with so yeah, and we, guys we, we didn't get dinner until like to... a year and a half in yeah it was, it was exactly yeah she's gonna earn that bro so <laughs> i think with a lot of guys they they with a girl for three weeks they've made it to their girlfriend they've met all their friends they're introducing you to family like it's way too much way too early you're coming off as a little bit needy and there's no need for it right let the girl earn all of those things that, that are a part of your life i agree with that completely yeah. 
I would just add to that. I think a lot of guys make the mistake of, you know, they hear one side of people saying, keep all your problems away from your woman. And they hear the other side saying, share everything with her. She's your greatest ally. And I think what's missed is to basically whatever you choose to do, if you're going to share your life with her, your problems, your, you know, your, the good and the bad, you've got to add at the end of that, like, and everything is going to be okay. Because a lot of guys will share their own personal problems and the fucked up stuff that's in their mind. And then they'll just leave it there. Like, here's your burden right to share with me but i think the important thing is to like remind at the end like it's all going to be okay i've got it taken care of i'm going to handle this right and i think that's what guys miss with the whole vulnerability versus like keep your life separate argument um i would say it comes down to i think there's like a ratio of who like how um who's more i guess grounded and dependable and if the girl has to put on the role of the man being the one that's like constantly there for you when you're having like breakdown after breakdown then that's that's not a good situation to be in but if you're there for her more than she is there for you and then sometimes you have issues and you like become really vulnerable and open up to her uh, as long as the ratio is like favorable in your favor then it won't it won't be an issue even if you don't end it off the way you did with just like saying it's gonna be okay even if you're like hey listen i really don't know what the fuck i'm gonna do about this because this is like this is a big issue like as long as she's generally being the woman and you're generally being the man in terms of that dynamic i think it's probably fine or at least it has been for me i don't know maybe it's different for other people yeah, yeah i mean i, I guess the, I, the I just... is, and it's gonna change yeah. on the girl like there are some girls oh sorry go on bro no, 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 it's fine. You take it. You got it, man. Yeah. Are you frozen? You're back now. Oh, there yeah, I'm, I'm lagging like crazy right now. You're good. You're good. You can continue. Okay, yeah. No, I'm saying like the, the perception matters, right? So some women... They're gonna, you know, they're gonna be at that perception that if I even see you a little bit vulnerable, or I see you cry, I, I think this is the worst thing in the world, and I think you're a little pussy. And there are some girls that are like, I really like when guys kind of be a little bit more vulnerable and share your emotions. So number one, it's gonna depend on the girl, and number two, as Alex said, it's gonna depend on their perception of you. If you are always helping them out, you're always being there for them. If she sees you as the man, and then at one point you're like, hey, you know what? Like, fuck, this is really challenging. I need your help with something. What do you think of this? Or you just need someone to vent to. It's very different to being using her as like this emotional tampon that you're just like emotionally dumping on. So it's a little bit more nuanced, I think. But I, I like the idea and I like the message that you can have times where you are vulnerable with a girl. You can share things with your girl. That is fine. I think there's, you know, the red pill space is just like, be stoic. You have zero emotions. Never show your. I think that's bullshit. I, I think women actually enjoy that. I think you're gonna have a better relationship, and it's nice to have someone to chat to about things. So, yeah, I think that's the message we should be pushing. Don't cry in front of your girlfriend. Cry in front of your bros. Let me put my two cents here. As well. Like you know, hi guys. Uh, oh, hey man, for a few seconds. Yeah. So, uh, last couple of years, I create amazing relationship. Actually, I took a girlfriend and create a partner, and I really believe, like speaking now to this topic. It really comes down to testing her and slowly involving her into the parts of your life, basically that she can contribute and that you can share stuff with her. So like, you know, of course, you don't want to open all your areas of your life, like, you know, financial business and everything like, you know, to, you know, first random chick that you bring home, like, you know, all kind of, you know, first something girlfriend like, you know, but if you slowly involve her into your life, like, you know, with small tasks, like, okay. She can cook, okay. She can do this. And you, you, do, you, you give her slowly things and you see how's that beneficial for your life. You know, is is your life better with her with that area or worse with her? Like, you know, and this is how you slowly build up like fully partnership. Like I like an amazing relationship, like you know, a girl that I love, like you know, and basically we share, I would say, pretty much maybe like you know, 80, 90 percent of the stuff what's happening in a day, like you know, on a daily basis, like even the girls and you know. We are kind of wingmans, you know, going out, you know, kind of have fun with the girls. So it's really, I mean, you can, I mean, if you really go like, you know, stupid, I don't, I, you know, I'm going to cut my life like, you know, half. So she only, you know, gets to see what, you know, what I choose. Yes. Okay. That, that's okay. That's okay. But you can slowly involve her more and more into it. I mean, it really comes down who is the girl, you know, quality of the girl, how aware she is, like, you know, where is she in life and what what do you want on the end with her? Is that your kind of life partner? Is that a girl that you're going to be like, you know, banging for next six months? Of course, you're not going to like, you know, share your bank account with her, like, you know, but like it really is 
every as you say like you know every girl has different qualities some girls can help you with marketing some girls can help you with writing articles she's a journalist like of course you're going to involve us all into that like you know to help you out like, and you're going to help her out on the other end like on her side where she's you know where she needs help yeah i i, I agree with that although I would, I would add one thing if like if it's a if, if it's a girl that you can't trust to help you out with like shit then you shouldn't be dating her in the first place like she's not yeah. like girlfriend material then like why would you want to date a girl who you can't like rely on like to me it's like if i'm going to be in a relationship with a girl i better be able to rely on her for a lot of shit i better like if i'm like yo i need this shit right now she better like be able to help me and not be like you're being feminine like i don't know <laughs> Matt, how long has your uh relationship been with your girlfriend again dan uh five years five years yeah there we go yeah. that, that's a lot longer than a lot of especially young people so uh yeah we we dived into that in our episode a few yeah, weeks yeah. ago very solid stuff um any yeah, other I, comments on that i think it's interesting to observe how like bad red pill podcasts are giving relationship advice they're yeah. they're better at giving advice on how to fuck girls and sleep with girls but when it comes to relationships they're so bad at it i mean typically none of them are in relationships themselves and Sometimes I've never been in relationships, uh, but they seem to think that like a relationship is basically like a, tr like a, almost like a value exchange where the girl cooks, cleans and fucks and you give her money and like drive her around and shit, whatever. And that's, that's what it is. That's, that's, I think they look at it very from a transactional perspective. I've never really seen any of these red pill podcasts talk about the importance of uh, good communication, you know, uh, how to address uh, problems before they, you know, before they begin, how to empathize and, you know, uh, understand where your girlfriend is coming from and vice versa, how to um, avoid problems in the first place through transparency, how much transparency is too much transparency. Like these are like, I think the things that make a relationship success successful, but like they're never discussed. And, and as well, very mm -hmm. important fact, what she needs from a man to be happy. And this is like, you know, where the whole communication comes down. Every girl has a different image in her mind of how her relationship she wants to be like, you know, and of course this is where compatibility comes from. Like, you know, so that's what I do very early in a relationship. So I always advise to my guys like, okay, like, you know, after a couple of months, okay, sit down and ask, okay, like, you know, write me down everything what you need from me that i can do on a daily basis to make you happy i want to know everything what other guys did didn't do they should have done it to make you happy i want to know all of that so when you come home tired i know i i want to know what i can do to make you happy you know yeah, that's sure. kind of essential and of course that list you give to her as well like yours so she knows and i mean this is very communicate i mean like, People say like, you know, you need to communicate, communicate. Communication is important, but quality communication, what the fuck you communicate about, that's even more crucial, you know? Yeah, sure. So, I just want to quickly respond to to Alex's comment because he said that a lot of the red pill channels um, uh -huh. never discuss this stuff. And I think the difficulty for a lot of those channels is that if they did discuss that stuff, they would potentially lose their audience, right? So you almost fall into sort of a catch-22 where it's like the more you learn about relationships – you there's this resistance to actually going there and changing your mind because if you change your mind what happens to your audience what happens to your brand so i think a lot of the the times what happens is that those guys just can't address it because it conflicts in some way with their branding which means that we've got a problem of truth right and experience speaking wisdom essentially yeah there's actually a term for that it's called audience capture so it's like the phenomenon like why does fox news constantly talk about like uh election denial shit or at least what they used to right because that's what their audience wanted to see right but then yeah. during the dominion lawsuit it turned out that like actually none of them believed in that they just talked about it because that's what the audience wants them to discuss so yeah i'm sure that happens with the red pill community but i would argue that like a lot of these guys they don't actually know any of this stuff because they haven't really been successful relationships uh it's, it's like watching a homeless person talking about making money it's like okay like what the fuck do you know um you know, it's just all it comes down to like all theory some of which is right but a lot of which turns out to be wrong yeah, yeah but yeah man, that, i, I that's see your so point true. that like if they start talking about like communication like their audience be like yo you're so gay bro you faggot like yeah it's not probably going to be a good look for some red pill podcast yeah, I, I totally agree with that. I think if a lot of them heard bad boys' answers, they'd probably be like, pussy. Like, would you asking a girl what she yeah. wants? Like, that's, that's yeah. Like, what, were you going to bring a fucking oh. flat? Like, it's, yeah, it's, it, 
but everyone in game is so bad at managing relationships. Like even you, you see guys that come in and they can have like a 300 lead count. They can go out and pull a goal, but you put them in front of a goal for more than three weeks and they have no idea what the fuck they're doing. They don't know how to handle relationships. They're either lying to the goal and saying that they're exclusive and have all these other goals on the side, or they make it way too casual and like the girls get a little bit slush shamed about it. And they, they don't know it's, they are so awful having all these but skills it's a completely different call, like, ball management. game it's a completely different ball game. 100% it's a different, completely yeah. different sport it's like running sprint and running a marathon you're gonna yeah. train differently to run sprint and to run marathon your muscles your food I mean, like everything you know whole lifestyle is going to be different for these two sports i mean it's you're still running but you're running 100 meters you're running like you know 10 20 50 kilometers like you know you will train different so of course it's you know kind of one thing doesn't mean you're gonna you know it's kind of a guy who drives the car doesn't know how to fix the car, you know. Really, driver doesn't. I have mean, to the know. problem is that guys think that the girlfriend is the finish line. They don't see it as a marathon yeah. or a sprint. They think that's a finish yeah. line. So they say, yeah. "Okay, I've got a girlfriend now. I'm done." Right? They become super needy. They get into this relationship, and I see this even with like fucking coaches back in the day. Like most coaches that I met back in the day had no that's idea true. what the fuck they were doing in relationships, right? And so yeah, the guys get into game, they get good at it, they fuck some women, they get in a relationship, they think that's the end. And then two years later, we hear all these stories where, okay, they get completely walked all over, they get completely emasculated, they have no fucking say in anything. They get out of their relationship like a broken fucking person. And it's like, if you just took some uh, same attitude towards the learning game or getting good with women, that you took it like relationship management, you wouldn't have a problem. But <laughs> if you think it's a finish line, that's where it fucks up. So then you learn that new skill. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I think one of the biggest problems that particularly young guys have today is there's like a complete inability to separate like sex and adventure, right? So a guy will go out and he'll talk to loads of women who will have a great time doing cold approach. And then it will come time for a relationship, right? And he's like, well, how can I do that? Because his entire life up until this point has had adventure and sex completely entangled together. So now the idea of giving up on like loads of sex with loads of different girls is like that's taking away the adventure from his life. So I think one of the big tasks for like young guys who actually do want a relationship is to disentangle sex with the sense of like conquest and adventure as a man. Because once the sex gone, what do you fill that adventurous side, right? What do you fill the explorative side of yourself with when it's not women and sex? Well, I don't think you have to give it up though. Like I never had to give it up. Like you can, like a lot of girls will be cool with you sleeping with other girls as long as it's framed in the right way. Uh, it's like, hey, like you're the only girl I'm gonna be, who's actually my girlfriend. You're the only girl I have feelings for. You're the only girl I'm gonna, you know, who's gonna be my family. But, you know, I like novelty. So occasionally I'll sleep with other girls and sometimes we'll fuck these girls together. I mean, I think like there's a lot of couples who make that part work yeah. where you don't have to give up the idea of fucking. It's not gonna work with every girlfriend, but it's gonna, I think it will work with more than people think if it's like framed the right way and it's framed that way from the beginning. Not like- I agree, I agree. Yeah, uh, that that's a good thing. Uh, a lot of people get confused by this particular thing. I absolutely agree that a lot of guys actually think it's more difficult than it actually is. I have had that experience before. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but it, uh, just to jump on that point, could, could you give some practical advice in order to have guys understand how they can make that happen? um sure yeah i think i did a video on this a while ago but essentially it comes down to this okay so i think the first first is screening you need a girl who's rather low on the jealousy um uh what's it called uh spectrum right so you, this won't work with a girl who's highly jealous or even moderately jealous you need a girl who's really not that jealous um and you need a girl who's at least somewhat open-minded like she doesn't have to be like a hippie or something like that but it can't be like a it's not going to work with like a traditional christian like religious type of girl, right? So the first part is screening. The second part is, um, I guess, making the value proposition high enough. So that's like, you're the best that she's ever had in bed. You're really fun to spend time with. You're really cool. Like none of the other guys that she has gone on a date with in the last two years come close. So the value proposition is high. And then when things evolve into a relationship, then you frame it like you just, you're just being honest. At least that's the way I did. I was like, hey, listen, like I really like novelty and uh, I don't want to like, be exclusive with you and then cheat on you and have to like break your heart. Uh, cause I did that in the past and I hated doing that. 
And she was like, well, I don't really care if you have sex with girls as long as you don't like start dating them. And and wait, so- wait, wait. And, and this doesn't really come as a surprise because your Instagram, your lifestyle kind of has that implication in the first place. Mine, I don't know if mine does really, but yeah, maybe maybe because of the YouTube channel. Although my girlfriend told me that she never like in the beginning, she never ever watched my YouTube channel because it would trigger her. Uh, so I don't know how much of that played in a role. But yeah, I think it just came down to the fact that she was she's very low on the jealousy spectrum like that. Uh, she is uh, semi open minded. And the fact that, uh, you know, I think the value, at least I like to believe so the value proposition was pretty high. And um, yeah, she she went along with it. Also, I think you can you can frame it as a way as it's like a positive. It's like, hey, listen, like you and I both can meet girls and have threesomes with them. So you're you're not making it about yourself. You're making it about both of you. Like, hey, this can be an adventure for both of us. So yeah, none of that. In, in my experience, at least uh, about five years ago, I think I did have a girlfriend. Not for that long though. She what she she actually brought up the conversation in the first place. I remember her saying specifically, um, "I know you're. Uh, I know you would want to see other girls. I'm okay with that for now. But down the line, I would want you to uh, just be with me." That that is almost word for word what I remember her saying, and I didn't bring it up. But the reason, I guess, the reason for her saying that is because of how my Facebook, Instagram, and everything else was set up. Uh, it it didn't come as a surprise, and I didn't have to be the one to bring that up in the first place. So, in in your case, Alex, it's. Uh, maybe it wasn't apparent for you, but for for other guys, if you do have that kind of thing on display, like Justin does with his Instagram, very solid Instagram. They're very obvious. Like obviously, he's not just like you know. Once you see uh, his Instagram, you're not just yeah, exactly. Like, like the whole like oh let's be exclusive thing. Like I don't really get that problem. Like I'll meet girls and be like hey, just like the first thing I tell them is just you know, I have three girlfriends. Full disclosure, I, I love them from the get go. Or, um, I mean, they add me on Instagram, they just it's like in their fucking face, you know. And po- polygamy is like a real thing, and a lot of women are into it. A lot of women kind of like idealize the concept of sister wives, it's so crazy. Uh, but just, just clarify, uh, for, for one man with multiple women, it's called polygyny, whereas uh, polygamy is uh, the opposite, I think. I think you're mixing up polygamy and polyamory. So polyamory is where it's like open relationships. The girls date other guys, but polygamy is there's like one man, multiple women. The women don't date other one, other men. And so I, you know, what's funny about polygamy is it took me a long time to accept that I was like a polygamous man. Like I was hanging out with some friends and they were just talking about how happy they are with their girlfriends and how happy they are being monogamous. And they, they are describing like the thought of, happy they are that they can never lose this and they don't desire the women and i it, it was so weird there's like this disconnect where i was like i just don't see the world like that like i need to have like multiple women i need two three four right i maybe i can have like a primary girlfriend but then i have like a secondary third girlfriend you know they, they can all be friends right but just the way my brain is wired i think is a little bit different and i think a lot of men don't know how to actually communicate that it took me a long time to figure out how to actually communicate that in my relationships how do you do it now yeah I'm just honest from the get-go. Like, I I don't like lying either, right? And now, the, the problem is with a lot of women, when they fall in love, they get very emotional and they get very attached, right? Even if they would even accept the fact that you're polygamous or accept the fact that you want to date other women, you know, after they're attached, they, they're still going to show envy and jealousy. And so you kind of just have to set the boundaries of like, this is who I am. Om- almost as if like, like imagine like the concept of like coming out as gay. You have to come out as like polygamous and like set that like this is my sexuality or this is like how I see the world and this is how I view relationships. And this is like the world I live in, right? And I think polygamy actually works a lot better than polyamory as well because I think most women don't necessarily want to date other men. They want to attach themselves to like one strong, stable man, but they're okay with that man dating other women or seeing other women as long as they know they're loved or as long as they know they still wanted and desired so i find that really interesting it's the way because i don't think most men are are polygamous i don't think most men like a lot of guys like the concept or idea of polygamy but i don't think most men's brains are actually wired to be polygamous or even have the access where they could be polygamous 
right? They yeah. just want to have a relationship. In, in yeah. Germany. Justin, yeah, here's, I think here's, here's, here's how you got to frame it. You got to be like, listen, bitch, there's 1 billion people in India. Okay. I'm part of, there's literally five of us who are banging a bunch of white girls. I'm one of them. So don't you do it. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I think I'm pretty straight up with it. Even like with the social media, like I've got thousands of girls on Instagram and they kind of see what it is. And it kind of almost filters out the girls that wouldn't be okay with it, right? And so one thing I started doing was screening for bisexual women because I figured instead of dating straight women who aren't into girls, right? Bisexual women would be more empathetic and understanding with the concept of wanting to date other women as well, right? And so over the last year and a half, did a lot of that. And it was a lot of fun. I had a lot of very fun, exciting experiences. But I, I almost even found that a lot of bisexual women weren't even good, stable dating partners. Like they, they, The girls that just want the fun, they're not going to be good girlfriends. So I found like dating straight women who are monogamous to you, but you kind of do your thing. Kind of just makes the most sense. If you're looking to actually have like serious long-term relationships. Oh yeah, for sure.